Hi everyone. It's me, Dr. Stacy Betancourt. It's Sunday, which means it's another edition of Making Sense with Dr. Stacy. So jumping right into it, jumping, jumping, I don't know, jumping right into it. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about last week's recording. I am so grateful for the emails I have received through my website. Um, please know that you can drop comments here, um, email the website. I do read everything, both pros and cons. And I've heard from some people last week who um, wanted, one person specifically wanted to know how can I justify giving the advice to just walk away from someone because that someone, the, the person in question is someone who is as they perceived in need. And why would you walk away from someone in need? And you're right to a point, okay? And I did explain that in the video, but I want you to consider something. There is a point where you can have a reciprocal relationship where there's an equal give and take and it works. And then there are other situations where a person, especially in a, what can be construed as a toxic relationship, can really take away from who you are. It makes you sacrifice your morals it makes you sacrifice, they make you sacrifice your mental outlook. They can actually become so entrenched in your life because that's sometimes what toxic people do is that they will do everything in their power to make you feel guilty. And when you allow somebody to make you feel guilty, you are giving that person control of your life. And that's not okay. And, and there are times where people, either by their own omission or by all, all the signs being there, all the symptoms are there, where they are very controlling people because in their life, they can't function unless they are in charge. And the thing is, they become less in charge and more like a bulldozer. So the reality to that is, is that a relationship, a healthy relationship is a natural interaction and passing off, you know, the leading and the following and just being together and doing the things that you enjoy together and not having to be run all the time. So the thing is, and what I'm going with is another level and that's control. And there are people who they say misery loves company. Well, it's true. And if you are with somebody who is getting you to sacrifice your inner compass, your moral center, all of those, those cliches, you know, truthfully, they're so on point because if somebody is, trying to get you to sacrifice who you are and everybody should know who they are. Everybody should know what they think, what they feel, how they process, what they prefer, what they don't prefer, all of those things. If there is somebody in your life who's trying to get you to feel badly for those things, then they're not the person for you. And you have to be willing to say no because the last thing you want to do is lose yourself, okay? Losing yourself is not worth being with someone who doesn't respect you because what they're saying without saying it, what they're doing without it, them carrying a sign is they're trying to get you to sacrifice everything you are, everything you believe, to be just like them, because then they feel better. So looking at that, letting that person go, whether you need just a break or you need a clean break, and only you can decide that, 
And I did get an email from someone saying they recently let someone who's very, was very toxic in their life out of their life, but they never thought to tell them. Now, my take on that is that you owe it to that person to let them know that they have crossed, crossed a line that you are not willing to accept and be kind in your words. But sometimes there's not kind enough word ever. You may just need to say, look, you know what? You go your way. I wish you well. I'm going to go my way. And should our paths cross again? Great or not. And, and that's the thing is that you have to be willing to accept that they may never want to see you again. And that's okay. Because what you need to do and what you need to look at in the meantime is number one, you need to make sure that you have regained who you are inside. You need to make sure that you have had a chance to regain your center and your focus, your feelings, beliefs, behaviors, all of those things that make you you, you need to be comfortable with that. And you need to be comfortable with yourself because again, only you can incite change within yourself. And no amount, and it's sad to say, even the most intensive treatment, if you don't want to change, you won't. Okay. So, and that's the thing is there are things in my own life where I have allowed people to take away from me to a point where I didn't know who I was anymore. And I'll tell you one thing, regaining who you are is so important. I will never sacrifice who I am, good, bad, indifferent. I will never let another person take that away from me because I have worked very hard to become the person I am. Now, some of you may not like that. Some of you may find that you don't like me for that. That's okay. But I am happy with who I am and you should be happy with who you are too. Um, so here's the thing. What do you do? Well, you got to give yourself some time. You have to mourn a little bit. You need to be able to be okay with the decisions you made. And that's processing them, mentally letting it go. The whole reason why you needed to pull away from the person was because they weren't meeting your emotional needs and they were getting you to try and sacrifice your own. And that's not okay. That's a very manipulative person. And so you need to almost kind of heal from that. You've got to. You need to be okay in your skin. And that takes readjusting. It takes realizing who you are and finding yourself. Because depending on how long this person's been in your life and how much control you let them take, that could be damaging. So give yourself the gift of getting to know yourself again, because that's important. So the thing is, is that, um, as I've said before, your life is a journey. And that journey is going to be filled with positive interactions and negative ones. And that's the thing is the more positive and more open-minded and more in tune with yourself that you are, the easier it's going to be to identify the people who are trying to take that away from you. And nobody has that right. So again, um, it's okay to feel a bit of sadness. It's okay to miss them a little bit, but understand that by you pulling away from someone who is toxic in your life, you have made the first big step to reclaiming who you are and who you envision yourself to be. So with that being said, always try and do it with kindness. Sometimes that's gonna be challenging but it's all about the journey. So 
Um, be good to yourself. I wish you all a great week. Um, if you have any questions, remember in the comments below or send me an email through my website. This is Dr. Stacy Betancourt with another edition of Making Sense with Dr. Stacy. Take care and I will see you all next week. <laughs>